The movie begins in a small town in the Netherlands. A middle-aged man named War lives with his wife Tyne on an isolated farm surrounded by open meadows. War likes to watch birds as a hobby. He often goes out in the woods with his binoculars and a book about birds. One day, War is bird watching when he hears chirping noises nearby. He goes to check for the noise and finds a tiny creature lying on the ground. The creature fits in the palm of his hand. It has a body and a face like a human female but has wings for arms. War looks up at the sky to find her mother but doesn't see anything. Such a strange creature fascinates War, so he brings her home to show his wife. Tyne is shocked to see the little girl with wings. War claims that the bird girl might be an extremely rare species because he has never read about such creatures before. He makes Tyne remove things from a basket on the dining table and uses the basket as a crib for the little girl. Tyne suggests they contact the police and hand the girl to them, but War wants to wait for the girl's parents to arrive. Later, we see Tyne lovingly singing a lullaby to her. Tyne and War have no kids, so they decide to take care of the little girl as their own in case no one comes to get her. Tyne dips a finger into the water and feeds the little girl. At night, they look at the sleeping child in fascination while deciding her name. War wants to name her Birdie, but they settle on the name Vigeltja. The very next day, Tyne buys a Barbie doll that comes with a changeable dress for Vigeltja and a tiny baby bottle to feed her. Meanwhile, War makes Vigeltja a larger stroller so they can take her outside like a normal child. But when they put her on the stroller with a blanket, her wings are still visible. So, Tyne cuts War's sock and sews it into a tiny poncho to hide Vigelch's wings. The poncho works, and the two take their new daughter for a stroll in the town. While walking, Vigelch makes noises which Tyne thinks is her trying to talk, but War believes she is more bird than human, so she might just be chirping. Some women from the town are delighted to see the new child. War tells them that they have just adopted Vigelch. When asked why she is so tiny, the two end the conversation and leave. Now a lot of time has passed and Vigelcha has gotten bigger. She now barely fits in the dining table basket. She has still not learned to talk and only makes noises like a bird. One day, Tyne notices Vigelcha trying to fly. As time goes by, she starts acting more like a bird than a human. Tyne is distressed by the fact because she wants her daughter to be more human. Despite the fact that she is different, Tyne tries to teach her to speak and eat with her feet. The two have made a tiny crib for Vigelcha right beside their bed. But she jumps into their bed and sleeps in between the couple when she is scared. One day, Tyne hears Vigelcha saying the word Nini. She thinks the girl is calling her mama. From that day onwards, she teaches her the alphabet. But Vigelcha doesn't seem to get it. She also notices Vigelcha eating bugs from the floor. Thinking that it is normal for birds to eat bugs, she serves Vigelcha worms on a plate and makes her use her feet to eat it. When Vigelcha cannot do it, Tyne is frustrated. She believes that Vigelcha can only learn manners by copying other people around her. The following day, she takes Vigelcha to a restaurant. Vigelcha sees pet birds flapping their wings and does the same. Afraid of being noticed, Tyne takes her to a bathroom cubicle and asks her to flap her wings there. She waits outside, talking to a woman. When Vigelcha doesn't come out after some time, Tyne opens the door to see only her shoes. She gets a glimpse of Vigelcha flying away through the window and yells her name but to no avail. Tyne goes back home, still worried for her daughter, and tells War about the disappearance. They figure that Vigelcha mustn't have gone too far, so they make their way to town to look for her. Meanwhile, we see Vigelcha flying with a group of birds, having the best time of her life. She suddenly loses her balance because of the wind and lands on someone's bed through a skylight window. It turns out the room belongs to a little girl named Lotja. Lotja is fascinated by Vigelcha's wings and asks her where she got them. The two befriend each other. Lotja's father doesn't have time to play with her, so she finds solace in Vigelcha. Elsewhere, War and Tyne reach the town and go to an airline information desk. When they do not get the information they need, they make their way to a hotel to stay for the night. Meanwhile, Lotja pretends that she is also a bird and takes Vigelcha to a nearby tree. Vigelcha easily climbs up and sleeps on a branch, while Lotja naps on the lower branch. War and Tyne can't stay at a hotel because all the rooms are booked. They somehow end up coming to the same tree and sleeping underneath it. In the morning, the couple meets Locha, who tells them about a bird girl sleeping on the upper branch. But before they can get to her, Vigelcha has already flown away. As the couple tries to leave, Locha follows them, claiming that she'll help them find Vigelcha. 
they get on a bus while following a flock of birds. Tyne doesn't want to take Locha with them because she has a lot to handle, but the little girl claims that she can take care of herself. Vigelcha is flying with a flock of birds, but cannot keep up because of their size. She lands on the roof of a church. The people see her and call the firefighters to bring her down. When a firefighter reaches her, he sees her flying away from afar. The people assume the girl was taken away by eagles. The news makes the television, and War sees it too. The couple then goes to the firefighter's house and tries to tell him about Vigelcha being a bird. He almost doesn't believe them, but tells them that the bird went south. He even offers to help them find her. The group then makes their way south. Meanwhile, Vigelcha reaches a tiny house in the middle of nowhere. She is sitting at the window, watching some birds. When they fly away, she joins them, but just then, gunshots are heard. The group follows the noise, and Locha finds Vigelcha at the bottom of the well. They use the fireman's gear to go down the well and see that it is just Vigelcha's poncho. As night approaches, they still haven't found her, so the group goes to a nearby hotel to stay. Tyne has started treating Locha as her own daughter. At night, Locha notices a strange boy on a tree outside her room. She joins him, and the two have a nice chat. Later at night, the boy is sleeping on his bed and hears a noise from under it. When he checks, he is surprised to see Vigelcha sleeping under his bed. He remembers Locha telling him about her, so he quickly goes to call her. The two return to see that Vigelcha is still there. All of them get under the bed and sleep for the night. Locha is happy to have her friend back. In the morning, the boy's mother comes to clean his room. The kids run to call Vigelcha's parents, but Vigelcha has flown away again before they can get to her. Now it is time for the group to continue the pursuit. However, Locha doesn't want to leave the boy. He is the only friend she has ever had, and unlike Vigelcha, he doesn't run away. Tyne understands the little girl and lets her stay. The three of them then continue their journey, but the fireman gets weak and decides to stay in a nearby shed. The other two end up in a jungle where they cross a river. War has had enough of the pursuit and tells Tyne that they should rest for the day. They go back to the shed and sleep. At night, the firefighter wakes up to a chirping noise. He sees Vigelcha hanging upside down on a tree. She has injured her wings while flying. The firefighter rescues her and dresses her wound. When Vigelcha tries to fly again, she is successful. In the morning, the firefighter tells Tyne and War about his encounter and assures them that Vigelcha is fine. He then separates from the couple, who still pursue their daughter. They reach a beach and see Vigelcha fly away towards the sea. They finally realize that she has grown up and watch her fly away together. The couple plans to take a bus back home, but War hears a chirping noise before getting on the bus. He runs toward the sea as Tyne follows behind. They rescue a drowning Vigelcha from the water and bring her back. In the following scene, the three are back home having dinner. The couple is over the moon to have their daughter back and celebrates by drinking. But the next morning, they see her trying to fly away through the window again. The couple feels bad for trying to limit their daughter's freedom. They finally decide to let her go, happily. Warren and Tyne take her to the meadow she was found in, give her one last kiss, and let her fly away. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.